Hi, my name is Shai Schmelzer, and in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to manage the life cycle of database objects with Oracle Visual Builder Studio. We're going to show you how Visual Builder Studio provides you with a central repository where you can manage all the scripts that define your database object. We're going to leverage the SQL command line build step in Visual Builder Studio to run scripts against our databases. Specifically, we're going to show you how connectivity works for Oracle databases in the cloud, including the Oracle Autonomous Transaction Processing Database. And we're going to leverage Liquibase to manage the versions of our database objects through scripts, both on our local database and inside our cloud database through the Git repository. We're starting in Visual Builder Studio with a new empty Git repository we created, and we're going to clone this repository. Let's copy the URL to this Git repository, switch to our terminal, and issue a git clone command to get a local copy of the repository from the cloud. This is going to create a new ShyDB directory on our machine. Let's uh, change directory into this directory, and we'll show you that right now there's only a readme file in here. Let's go over and connect to our database using a SQL CL command line. And um, we're connecting to a local database on our machine, an Oracle XC database in this case, and we're using SQL command line version 19 on our machine. Let's see which tables are currently inside our database. We'll issue a select table name from user tables to see a list of all the tables. And so far, we only have one table in here. So now we're going to use some liquid based command to create a structure that would allow us to replicate this database structure on other places. The first thing you want to do is generate a control file. So you can use the liquid base shortcut LB and then the uh, command that you want to use. If you mistype the command, you'll get a little help that show you the correct command. So in this case, the correct command to generate a control file is gen control file. So let's do an LB gen control file. And now we have a controller.xml file that has been created for us. Next thing we're going to do is generate a file that describes the employee table and how to create it. So to do that, we're going to use the LB gen object command over here. We need the type of the object. In our case, it's a table. And then the name of the object. In our case, it's the employees. Again, a new file has been created for us, the employees table XML file. Let's go over and look at those files in our file browser. You can go into the directory and see the two new files over here. We need one more file to be uploaded into this directory, and this is the information about how to connect to our database. Um, we have a wallet file, and um, we're going to copy it inside the new directory into our structure of the Git repository. So now let's click on one of the files to see it in our code editor to see what's in it. So if we go over and open the controller file in Visual Studio Code, we can see that over here we have a placeholder for the files that we want to add into our uh, liquid base execution. So we're going to add the employees table XML file as the file that needs to be executed. Let's save this file and then look at the Git operations over here. We have three new files in our directory that we should be adding to our local stage area. So let's click the plus sign next to each one of them. And now that they are all part of our transaction, we can issue a commit. In the commit, we can write our comment. We can also reference specific issues that we're tracking inside Visual Builder Studio. And next, we're going to use a push command to push our changes into the Git repository in Visual Builder Studio in the Oracle Cloud. Let's switch over and look at it from the Visual Builder Studio interface. We're going to refresh our project homepage. And we can see the transaction uh, to the Git repository over here. 
if we look at the Git repository, we'll see the files right now. Let's go over and define a new build job that would take those files and execute them against our cloud database. So I'm going to create a new build job. Um, I'm going to replicate an existing build job just to save me from typing some aspects. But we're going to look into the exact configuration of this build job to see what you need to set in here. So the first thing you will want to do is connect it to your Git repository. Okay. We're connecting it to our master branch and specifically we're going indicating that every change to the master branch would fire up this build job. Next, we're going to go into the steps of the build and over here you can see we have a SQL CL build step um, that connects to our database. We'll provide a username, a password and a pointer to the place where our wallet file is. And then we can inline specific SQL CL commands, including the liquid base commands. So over here, we're going to do a status command based on our controller XML file and then an update command and then we're going to check which tables are now inside our database. So all of those are part of our SQL CL step, which is one of the steps you can invoke in a build procedure. So let's save this, and then we're going to build this build job. So let's run it now. When the build job finishes, you can see the success. You can go to the log file and see all the information over here, including our interaction with the Git repository, checking out the code, issuing the liquid base commands, and then um, executing the select to see which tables we have. And you can see that now after we issued that, we now have an employees table over here inside our database, along with the liquid base tables that track changes. So this is initializing our database in the cloud. Now let's go over and see a flow of making a change. We'll start by looking at the issues and we can see that there's a new issue that is still open and unassigned. Let's click on it and we can see the description of the issue, all the information that was provided over here. Specifically, they want us to create the bonus table. We'll take ownership of this issue and we're going to then go over and create this table in our local database. So um, we'll just issue a create table command from SQL CL. And then we're going to use a liquid base command to generate an additional file that describes the structure of this table. Now we have a new file, the bonus table.xml file in our Git repository. Let's hit the refresh to see the new file. We can then go over and see what is in there. Let's add it to our stage area. And then we'll want to modify our controller file to add a pointer to this new file we just created and indicate that this file also needs to be executed when we're populating a database. So we'll change this line to say bonus. We'll save this file and then we're going to um, commit those two files into our Git repository. We'll reference the issue that we're resolving in the remark. This would allow us to directly link to it from our transaction. And then we're going to push the changes into our Git repository. Once the changes have been loaded, we'll go to our project homepage. We can see a build job that has started as a result of this push that we did into the master branch of our code. We skipped here the step of doing branches of code and doing code reviews. You can learn more about those capabilities of Visual Builder in other videos. All right, we can see that the job finished successfully. Let's look at the log file. We can see that now when we are selecting from the tables, we can see both tables, the employees and bonus 
existing in our cloud database. So this is how you can use Visual Builder Studio to manage the lifecycle of your SQL scripts and database scripts.